Synthetic oil protection. I'm your host, Steven. We got Jeff coming over. Hey. Jeff's our master technician. And Jeff's going to put on his uh, yeah, let's get microphone going. Let's go live. So, yeah, so today's topic is uh, suspension and steering components. We're going to be talking about all different information, answering all your questions. So, uh, definitely uh, put a bunch of questions up. And Jeff and I are uh, going over all the questions. We're going to answer all your questions. So, uh, <clears throat> hope you had a great week. Really appreciate you tuning back in. And uh, Jeff here, he, mm -hmm. uh, he's really having a lot of fun with uh, the products. We're doing all kinds of really cool stuff, helping a lot of different people. And uh, yeah, I know you saw on the, the uh, thumbnail, we got the PI performance improver. Really good fuel additive, it's awesome. And uh, this is, uh, I actually did a follow-up video yeah, today on a good friend, Dave. He has a 2019 C7 Stingray. And Ooh. we actually did a follow-up video with Signature Series. And this is actually exactly what he runs, the 040. And 100% uh, synthetic. And he ran that for 7,000 miles. And uh, at 7,000 miles, he burned off his zero motor oil. Wow. So absolutely nothing. What's the mileage of the vehicle? It's 14,000 miles. Okay, all right. 7,000 miles on an oil change. And uh, he said, yeah, I might just leave it in, you know. But, okay. Uh, so there you go. That's the, we'll show you what the oil looks yeah. like. It just looks like brand new oil, basically. Uh -huh. There's a little bit of soot in it, but very, very little. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There we go. We're live. Let's pull our. Uh, looking on that, Jeff. We're looking good. If you pull up your YouTube right. over there. Jeff's got Facebook Live going. And uh, is your microphone on, Jeff? Uh, yes, sir. It is. All right. Yep. Right here. Oh, look. We're on. Oh, I'm not on. Oops. All Welcome right. to Synthetic Oil Protection. All right. Yeah, we'll have to redo <laughs> it. Yeah. You're good. All right. Going. Yep. I gotta hold it out. I gotta have it straight out, or it won't won't pick up. Okay. All right. Yeah, just sit on the table. Yeah. All right. There we so, go. so we're good. So yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get right. in here so I can see all the comments. There we go. Hi, Linda. Linda, would you type something in so I can see if my chat's coming up right? Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. So. Uh, okay. All right. We're looking good. All right. So yeah. So. Uh, there we go. All right. We're looking good. All right, so, wow. That yeah. sounds awesome. Up and going. Fantastic. Okay. Sounds right. awesome. Cool. Wow. So let's get the awesome. feed out of that. There we go. All, All right. right. So I got my chat up, you got your chat up. And, All right, cool. Uh, Liquid gold there. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for tuning in, Matt. Really appreciate it. Uh, we got, uh, who else? Matt, Matt, Matt. Just posted your live feed. Sweet. Thanks for sharing everything, Matt. Uh, Matt's actually been a, a end of month giveaway Saturday. Oh, the yeah. last weekend of the month, Saturday, 11 a.m. We have uh, Evens giveaway. So we're giving anything away. Uh, from car parts, anything you want, $100 gift card we give to get Jeff's Garage. Nice. And then we also do uh, all kinds of really cool uh, different tools and stuff that we both use. Oh. And we know people can get some good use yeah. out of. We got a swivel saw or a yeah. swivel last time, a universal joint for 3 8 drive, and we got a, a magnet. We've done a hat, a burger press. We've done, my gosh. He's done a bit, a flashlight. Yeah. And what's next, Jeff? What's uh, the next thing we're getting into? Uh, whoa. Next thing we're gonna get into, are we talking about the uh, the Yeti cup here? Yeah, Yeah. could be. We're gonna get a Yeti cup, what else you got? Nope. Can't stay long, I'm at the go-go in the boulder. Chinese food, all right. 
that's munching away just like us. Cool. So there yeah. There you go. All right. So Jeff, what's uh, what should we get into on um, suspension? Well, let's start with uh, first things first on suspension. Okay. Um, we're going to start at the ground. All right. So one of the most important things to have correct is your suspension and steering because your tires are going to show you whether or not there's a problem. All right. So if you have ever had a tire that hummed and you went to a tire shop and they said, oh, your tire's cupping, it's because the alignment's incorrect, so it actually uh, makes raised lips on the inside or outside edge of the tire, and that's the buzzing sound you hear. All right. Second thing, uh, inside or outside tread wear is going to indicate an issue with uh, camber, toe, um, and then you just... You hear, I heard a vehicle going down the street the other day. It sounded like a cat that you grabbed the tail. And, and I'm like, I, I, did they not hear that? So, so <laughs> tell us, Jeff, is there a quick and dirty way of doing uh, alignment on the fly? So there is. It, it, it's dirty, but it ain't quick. All right. So <laughs> alignment, doing alignment on the fly, you are uh, basically you're going to use a piece of string and then the uh, the seat belt of the vehicle. So the first thing I do is I take the seat belt and I take the steering wheel and I lock it down so the steering wheel stays, stays centered. All right. Okay. With the steering wheel centered, then me, I take my calibrated eyeball, which I received from the uh, United States Army. All right. I have a calibrated eyeball. All right. I can see within about uh, three one thousandths of an inch for alignment. All right. Give or take. So I look down the side and I align the sidewall of the tire uh -huh. to the sidewall of the rear tire. And as long as I don't see a whole lot of deflection, I know we're close. So when I put my eye on it, I'm basically looking to see, barely see three edges. All right. And I do the same on the other side. So then I determine whether or not we're towed out or towed in. All right. And which tire is the worst. So I'll go to the worst tire, I'll bring it in a little bit. But this is only functional until you get to a place to actually get a computer alignment. You can get it very close, and then what you do is you actually can take a piece of thread from inside of the tire, inside of the tire on the front, and then inside of the tire, inside of the tire on the back, All right. and measure it. And if they're the same, you're on. I still like the computer-operated devices better yeah, because big time. You, when you're done, you can print it out. Um, I had a machine that was a, it's older now, but it was brand new. Back when I used it in 2005, it was a Hunter. This thing was amazing. You could actually go in there if you wanted to do alignments, and I used to do it just to challenge myself. You go into half tolerances. Huh. So if you've ever gotten an alignment sheet from an alignment shop, it generally has uh, three steps down. So you got the top, which is generally your red, then you have the next step down, which is green, and then you have this little tiny step in the middle, like a little bucket. That little bucket, if you can put the needle in the bucket, your alignment is exact. That is, that is as close as you can get. So if you go to half tolerances, it's like going on hard mode, uh, veteran mode in uh, modern warfare. All right. You just clicked on veteran mode. Now it takes your easy brackets off the side and you only have the little green bar that big. Huh. And if you can't shoot the pin in that hole, you fail. All right. That's it. Interesting. So. <clears throat> Very interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, do you know when the, uh, the laser alignment machines came out? Well, the first few alignment machines, um, I, I know they're a beam style, right? right? And they're these weird looking boxes that have arms that float out in front and they've got two little uh, beams that watch, um, that watch, you know? All right. So, there we go. A little, little freeze up yeah. on his, uh, Facebook. No big deal. That's you okay. Get it figured out. Oh, no. It's frozen, not us. All right. Cool. Okay, so anyways, um, these beams watch each other, and basically what they're measuring is you put in the, the specifications of the vehicle, and right. it knows how far those should be apart. All right. So basically it's just seeing how far they go apart. It's got two in the front, two in the rear, and then they see each other this way as well, so they've got lasers. If you break the beam, it stops. It gets pissed off. You have to deal with it again, and it was a very shitty way to do an alignment it went from with a good machine i could knock an alignment out in about 30 minutes wow for most cars that was a camber caster and tow some vehicles it's like a big truck or something those are harder to align no matter which way you go huh you're good well please sweet, sweet. um 
Yeah, so basically in and out in 30 minutes. Quick, awesome. easy, done. The other machine takes you 30 minutes to set the son of a bitch up. And then you got to calibrate it. Then you got to be ready. And then it takes you 45 minutes to align it because the second one of those beams moves, you watch your needles on the screen just wow, wow, wow. Huh. So yeah, they came up with really good technology. Now basically the computer sees almost like face, uh, face recognition where it uh, projects little dots onto your face. Uh -huh. It does the same thing. It sees these paddles on the sides of the wheels and projects the dots and actually sees the tires, four wheels in space, and that's how it aligns them. Wow. Really amazing stuff. Huh. So that's the first step to saving money on tires is having a good alignment. All right. <clears throat> Definitely uh, one big part of alignment tires. Yeah. And so we've, that's the first two subjects. After alignment, here's what we got next. So when you're having an alignment done, what if you can't get one of those numbers to hit the green? Why would you not be able to get a number to hit the green? Bend, bend component? There you go. All bend right. or damage component, uh, right. something that's just out of specifications. Where if you're doing your alignment and you go to this called compensation, you turn the wheels to the left, turn the wheels to the right, recenter to make sure everything stays good. If you've got like a bad tie rod or something, it'll kick out a little bit and you'll watch your thing bounce around and then you can take the tire, move it, and you just watch the bar go back and forth in and out. So then, sloppy. Yeah, exactly. You got too much slop in there. All right. So at that point, you stop your alignment, you do a full suspension inspection, you see what components it needs, and then you uh, let the customer know, you know what the next step is. Because obviously, if you do the alignment without telling them what's going on with their vehicle, you're going to have a problem. Oh, all right. They're going to be upset. <clears throat> awesome. John B. Thanks for checking out the channel, John B. Really appreciate it. And uh, let's see what he's got. I did the engine flush and signature oil change yesterday. Chevy runs great, especially today. Very noticeable day two. Awesome. I'm really happy that uh, you gave the engine flush a shot. And uh, we got it right here, speaking of the devil. Oh, Shibu. boy. We got some uh, flush. And this bottle was just updated. They just, just updated it. And now it's a little bit different. And what it does is it loosens sticky valves, gets all the carbon deposits away from the rings, and uh, really, really good the first time you switch over to do a uh, oil change to signature. It's really good to get all the old carbon deposits out. There's so much junk with uh, the other oils, like the full synthetics, the uh, mineral oil. It leaves like a crusty film around your piston rings. And when you put this flush in, it thins everything out. It also helps with turbos. So on turbos, there's actually a turbo coking. And what that is, it's this like uh, coating that gets inside the turbo and it actually leaves this sticky film and it actually prevents the turbo from actually cooling off. So when you run this, it saves you in a lot of ways, a uh, really, really uh, useful product. Also, a lot of cars have oil coolers and also the oil coolers and some of the turbos have a screen and it's like this mesh screen yep. and it blocks uh, like any type of impediments from going in there. Well, those screens can actually get clogged up with very, like, very common on Audi, yeah. Volkswagens, right. the little uh, one eight and the two O turbos. That yep. happens a lot. All the time. Yeah. yeah. So it's just one of those things that it's just a, it's a real helpful thing to do the first time you change. You don't have to, but uh, it just keeps you from having to uh, change the oil filter sooner because if you don't, when you put this high detergent oil in, it's going to pull all that junk out. Yeah. And all that uh, buildup is going to actually end up in your fresh oil filter. So you're better off just flushing it instead of having to change the oil filter sooner. So thanks for bringing that up, John. Really appreciate you sharing that on the channel. Thanks for being a huge part of the community and spreading the word. We really appreciate it. So yeah, so we're just keep ripping here. So we got some stuff going on in Facebook, Jeff? Yeah. Good, good. So yeah, so uh, back to the, the, this, the 2019 C7 Stingray, we uh, did the uh, follow-up video today, so you'll see that coming up in the next couple days. And we also got the dyno results coming up on Saturday. So uh, we're gonna be finishing that up with Zach. Zach's a new Amsoil dealer, and uh, we're just getting them started and uh, he had his Subaru Legacy, we did a dyno video. So if you go back a couple days on the channel, you go to the homepage, click on videos, 
you'll be able to see the past dyno video where we're actually doing all fluids changed on a 2000 Subaru Legacy and we're going to show uh, the improvements. How is it How is it better? What's it run like? How much more horsepower? Beautiful. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. We're yeah. gonna, we've got a couple of vehicles we're going to do that to also. Yeah, we have to. So It's a need. Absolutely. We're going to have to do a diesel. We're gonna have to do a sports car. Yeah. Could be uh, a Corvette sports car. Could be a Corvette, could, could be a Mustang. Be, could be someone could be we know. Could be someone we know, Whoa. like maybe Jeff with his Mustang 5.0. Yeah. Or me when I get my C6 Corvette coming up. Yeah, I can't wait, I yep. can't wait. Yep. So, uh, all right, so what's next? We discussed alignments. Um, we discussed how it's done. So when we find a component that's out of specs, what do we do? We let we figure out what it's going to take to fix it. So you uh, you go look at the parts, then you start looking in the book or call the parts store and say, hey, uh, I'm looking for a left hand lower ball joint for a 2005. I don't know, 2005 Ford Escort. All right. There you go. That's a car. Um, then they get you. You get the part, and then you look up. Everybody else is going to go on YouTube. So go on YouTube. Watch somebody do it. Watch at least two or three different videos to make sure that everybody's consistent. All right. Because if you have one guy that walks out there, goes straight to the ball joint, taps it with a magic wand and it's changed, that's probably not the way you're going to do it. I'm guessing you're going to have to get tools out. All right. Uh, option number two, if you do see a problem and you know what that problem is, um, you don't feel like tackling it, find a professional. There are lots of shops. Uh, I recommend go on Google, go on Facebook, look at the reviews, you know, read through them. Make sure you're going somewhere where you trust. If you go into any place and you get like that funny feeling in your guts, uh, there's a reason for it. There just has to be. So. Sweet. Yeah. So now as far as uh, the importance of greasing stuff, ah. what vehicle can we grease next on the channel? Okay. And uh, how often should you grease? Well, now greasing is one of those things where you are finding fewer and fewer vehicles that actually have grease points at all. Um, they don't have grease points, the ball joints are sealed. Um, realistically it's generally like trucks um a lot of things that do towing uh -huh. heavy duty vehicles tend to have grease points um give me one second um yeah the heavy duty vehicles will have grease points because if you're towing um you're going through mud you're going through water and stuff like that you're gonna wash whatever sealed grease you got yourself your regular old ford taurus it's got a sealed suspension, but guess what doesn't matter? The grease, because it's not, you're not swimming in it. You're not towing anything, well, hopefully you're not towing anything with it. Um, and you're driving on the road, you're not going off-road. You know, in, in the Army, after we did every single field exercise, all right, we were out in the mud and all the nasty and stuff like that, our job was to wash the vehicle, and we had what was called a bird bath, where you were just running through this really a really interesting so imagine speed bumps that are about two and a half feet high all right spread out about six seven feet apart uh -huh. and you're driving a humvee through and you're going oh i've like seen this. that the test suspension i've seen well that. it's to knock the dirt off oh all right and then you've got your buddies up on the side around you with fire hose cannons like the one you hold and you sit there and you spray the fire hose cannon. I'd put it in the middle. Oh, well. You should stick it in the middle. There we go. All right, so anyways. Beautiful. Your buddies, or not your buddies, are sitting there with the fire hose cannons, and they're supposed to be spraying the fender wells, the sides of the hood. I don't know if you've ever seen the Humvees that have, like, the canvas sides and canvas tops and canvas doors. Uh -huh. They're not waterproof. So sometimes your boy might try to shoot it in between the door crack and see how hard he can blast you. Oof. It happens frequently. That's nuts. Yeah. But you just huh. came in off of a long field exercise. You're enjoying that within a couple of hours. You're about to be laying in your bed after a hot shower and some some steak dinner. So you really don't care. Your, your tolerance for bullshit at that point, very high. It's awesome beautiful experiences Jeff brings to the channel. He's such a interesting uh, character. You know, Jeff 
I don't know if you guys know how I actually met Jeff. He's going to come and get the order. He can come and get it, yeah. yeah. So we're here at this killer veggie place. Really, really good food. Veggie Eat Express. Veggie Eat Express. Your name is? I'm Jason. Jason, so hi, Jason. 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 Jeff. serving us. Hey, Jeff. Good man. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jason. Hey, nice Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. And nice. the back phone is YouTube. The front phone is Facebook. Yeah. So. Hey, what's up, YouTube, Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Welcome yeah. to Veggie Eat. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to start with some uh, appetitos. I'm curious about, I want a three-piece buffalo wing. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go with the uh, pot stickers, four-piece order. Four-piece on that. Yep. And then when you get back, I'll have my dinner order. There you go. Cool? Even? For me, I'll just go with a, a salad with uh, something like a, what's your house dressing? Uh, we've got a couple. We've got the uh, bacon and the fish sauce, or egg roll sauce as it's called, a little sweet, a little tart, or I've got a sesame ginger vinegar. Let's do the sesame ginger, okay. and uh, I'll do it just a regular house salad. Okay. Sesame ginger. You got it. That'd be awesome. Really appreciate it. Can I bring you some more water in a minute? Sure. That'd be great. Right. That'd be great. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right. So we got that taken away. Cool. We're good to go. Done and uh, done. So, Jeff, tell them uh, where I met you. Well, we uh, we met at Elixir. I mean, right. we were at, we were both at Wonderground together, <clears throat> and then uh, the after party. Yep. The super fantastic after party where all, all the magicians and whoever in the crowd wants to come and join them until what about three o'clock two two thirty three o'clock in the morning. Yep. And we just have jam sessions. We go sit down. We you know pair off threes and fours, and we show each other some magic tricks, and we uh, you know. I like to go shoot some pool, but that's, you know, I was sitting next to a couple of guys, sitting next to uh, Alan yep. and uh, Pat, sitting next to Alan and Pat, and Eben was there, and we just, uh, we all started talking and teaching each other, having a good time. Yeah, so Jeff actually just took up uh, Magic about, what, a year or two ago? Uh, just about almost two and a half years now. All right, so Jeff is uh, two and a half years. a very mechanical mind, to say the least, 15 years experience in the battlefields. Doing uh, fleet uh, ground ground vehicles, yeah, and ground Army. vehicles, aviation, and uh, it's so cool to see him take up something uh, just the last couple of years. Yeah, and uh, he's come so far with the magic. And for me, I, how I got into it was I used to do it just back in high school for fun. Then when I moved out to Vegas, I actually did street performing, and I did close up magic for tips only. That's all I ever did. And uh, I did that for, God, I did that uh, about two and a half years. Wow. And then I, I went into other things. I sold cars at a Honda dealership, Chevy dealership, Ford. Then after that, I did uh, my own personal car finder where I find all different vehicles for people all over the United States. Yeah. I'm kind of like a car finding James Bond. No matter what it is, I get it and capture it and bring it back. It's okay. You can You're come good. in the video. It's, it's totally cool. Yeah, and uh, excellent service here. Fantastic. And uh, so that was one of the big things. Thank you. And then uh, from there, I love cars so much. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do uh, a channel kind of like uh, Jack LaLanne, but instead of being it for your body, just working out, yeah. teach people how to take care of their car, I mean, what if, to put in it. If there was YouTube back in the day, Jack LaLanne would have been on it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been there. He'd, he'd have been a big YouTuber. Yeah, yeah. So Jack Elaine, he did a TV series for about 30 years on television. He had 15 million, um, 15 million daily viewers. Wow. Yeah. That's yep. awesome. Yep. And uh, the jumping jack is named after Jack Lalane. That's right. So That's why the uh, in the military we do the side straddle hop because they will not pay for that name. All right. I like that. I mean, it's because it is. It's copywritten. Yeah, jumping jack. So we do the side straddle hop. Besides travel yeah. hop. All right. Just as uh, yeah, just as annoying and painful. Absolutely. That's so you funny. fall down from it. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, so it's interesting. So uh, so we started the channel, and then Jeff. What did we meet about a year ago, Jeff? A little yeah, more. Just about a, just about a year ago. So yeah. I see Jeff and wander around. He's he's doodling around. We're you outside. Might have saw me on one of my nights where I was working, where I was doing the close up. All I right. Seen me on a close up it, night. It could have been. Yeah. So, so Jeff's doodling around, and I'm like, huh. So I hear him talking about cars, and I go, huh, I got another car guy. And then I hear he's got a shop. 
So I'm like, wow, at that point, it was interesting. I go, this guy doesn't look like he'd own a shop. So it turns out Jeff's very, very different. He's just not like uh, a lot of the other people. Made, made of different uh, material. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's so hot out there, which I'm going to, in a second, I'm going to run out and go grab uh, grab the heat gun. Oh, yeah. We'll quick shoot outside and show everybody how hot it is. And very hot. And I, and, and I tell people that the heat affects my brain. It does. And I and, and you said, Jeff, I said, I swear to God, before the heat, I've, I've never been infected. But you say I was, though. Well, I think so. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think so. I think so. Is that no brain, no previous brain damage? I, I don't agree. All right. I did have previous brain damage. All right. All right. I knew it. You <laughs> see, I was right the whole <laughs> goddamn time. <laughs> I mean, to All be right. fair, I've, I've fallen on my head plenty of times. <laughs> I uh, I actually think that everybody at the shop thinks my head is made of iron. Cause we'll be right back. No problem. Grab the heat gun. Yeah. Everybody at the shop pretty much thinks my head's made of iron, and uh, I've hit it on the lift. There was one week where I believe I hit it twice a day for the entire week. And it generally happens right after you give yourself a nice, clean, close haircut, nice shaved head. That was like a magnet. A magnet for my lift, a tire, a brake rotor, you know, low hanging fruit. So, but let's see, he's going outside. Uh, we'll continue on the topic of uh, steering and suspension. So, we discussed tires, we discussed alignment, um, loose suspension components. Another thing is your shocks and struts. Now, I'm gonna have you wrap your head around this, okay? As you're traveling down the road, your shock and strut can oscillate, as in go up and down between 1,000 to 1,500 times per mile. 1,000 to 1,500 hops per mile. So imagine if there was nothing to break that vibration to the vehicle, break that vibration to the strut mounts, the car, your back. And so the whole car is just vibrating like this. Now, if you have good shocks and good struts, there's a dampening fluid in there that slows the oscillation down. So you can hit it twice, and it's still going to travel up at the same rate. It can go down at the same rate as well. So it's not being controlled by the road. You're actually controlling the hop of the wheels. And what happens is when you hit your brakes, as your struts compress, it actually gives you slow engagement right, of the we're road. Back. We're back. We're back, back rocking and rolling. We're so I'm back. going over uh, struts right now. All right, cool. So struts will actually keep the tire with the best contact of the road at all times. So if it's hopping and bumping, you're losing contact. At some point, that tire is off the road, even if it's just a little, little bit, or if it's not off the road, it has less material on the road. So shocks and struts, very good stops vibration um it, your axles if you're front wheel drive your axles have these cool little rubber boots that give flex as the as the knuckle turns and so if you have bad shocks and struts the rate that it goes back and forth will increase and will make the rubber hot and split the boots so shocks and struts part of steering and suspension that is a really really important component and i mean the you know with that explanation with that understanding you should look at your shocks and struts differently they recommend replacing them between 50 to 60,000 miles i've seen plenty of uh, monroe video or monroe uh, signs and and advertisements that say 50 to 60 i'll be honest i'm a little guilty i've gone decently over that before i've gone 80 or 90 but it's one of those things that the longer you go, when you change them out and you put new shocks, new strokes, it could be that comfortable, that it could be that smooth, that your braking distance decreases. With good struts, when you hit the brake, the vehicle doesn't have to wait for the nose to drop before the brakes engage. As it starts to drop, the brakes are already dragging the tires, so you're getting even braking all the way down, as opposed to having to slam first. And speaking of the devil, oh? I had such a good experience. I uh, I used to have a C5 Corvette. Yeah. And uh, it was my wife. A lot of people might ask if I'm wondering, is even married? Well, at one time even, I was. Even. Are you married? Uh, I was, Jeff. Tell me about it. Oh, jeez. Tell me. Tell me. Ah. Pull it together, Eamon. Pull it together. So, uh... Take a deep breath. 
Don't I used cry. To have a okay. Corvette right. and uh, got in an accident. And um, the video will be coming out on the channel soon. Oh. So we'll be sharing exactly what happened. Uh, Has it been on gag order for right now? Because I, I am privy to the video. Oh my. The glitch with the laptop. Uh oh. Right. Should be good though on there. We're still good. So, uh, yeah. Just uh, lost my wife. And. Uh, it's hard. So I, I actually had Bill Stein shocks on my car. Oh, yeah. Bill Stein are very nice. 2004 24 hour Le Mans edition, six speed manual Corvette. Whew. And I had the best shocks on it, and it just, oh, the, the yeah. way it pushes that, keeps that tire down under speed. Yeah. It doesn't let it pop up. And you uh, don't get that, there's no road vibration or anything uh, like that. Uh, you're just, you're smooth as butter. Bilstein is a, a wonderful German company. Germany. And they make uh, a lot of the OEM equipment for Mercedes, BMW, stuff like that. Yep. So yep. Um, you can pretty much assume that Bilstein is on the uh, on your Mercedes if you're driving one. So, oh my gosh. I see appetizers. Oh. Stoked. So somebody had said something last week, thank you, thank you, about us eating while shooting our video. I'm going to be honest with you. It's dinner time, but me and Eben discussed it. Yep. One person will eat while the other person is speaking. We won't have any dead air. Yes, and thanks, Dennis, for bringing that up. Appreciate we didn't that. realize we just liked animals. We looked like yeah. animals just eating there for a little bit. We did. We were like grazing. We were like... But, but we are. And... Uh, I'll move my mic down so you don't hear the sounds of mastication. Yes, yes. So. So. All right. Yeah, I know. Oh, my Hammer God. down. Beautiful. Oh, God, yes. Beautiful. He's on it. We're on it. Yeah. That's a couple different dressing choices there. Thank you. The salad. That's the ginger vinegar. That's the vegan fish sauce. Cool. Your wings yeah. are here. Beautiful. Awesome. Careful the stick there in the middle. Mind the stick. It is made with sugar cane. Okay. You can gnaw on it a bit, but I wouldn't try and chew it down. Don't try to right. like swallow Beauty. it sideways. No. Uh, <laughs> you just took the fun out of it. Chopsticks, Jeff. Ooh, some sticks. Yes. Which one? Those. Which one? Ah, that was magician's choice. I knew you were gonna pick those. You know how I knew? Just told you I knew. That's it. Done. Magic. <laughs> All right. So. These are vegan buffalo wings. All right. So all I got to say is dibs. All right. I'm taking the first bites of food. All right. I'm going to tell you how a vegan buffalo wing is. Hey, Jeff, we got some good questions here. Look at this. I like good questions. Look at this. We got tell our ostentatious, bodacious bro, Jared. Really, really appreciate you uh, asking some questions, Jared. Thanks. And let's see what he's got. Jared says, cheers. That's right, cheers to protection, protection, protection. And remember, if it ain't wet, it ain't protected. And if it ain't protected, it ain't wet. So that's why the wetter the better. You wanna make sure it's well lubed. And uh, that's what it's all about, protection on this channel. And Jeff, uh, pull this up real quick. So Jared, our good man Jared, I'm getting carried away. Go ahead. Uh, what else we got? We got thoughts about dot 5.1 brake fluid. That's a great oh. question. So tell us, Jeff. Give us some of your thoughts. Dot 5.1? I feel like a retard now. I have never heard of 5.1. That is fantastic. That's something I got to look up. All right. All right. So uh, dot 5.1 I'm not familiar with. I, I do know dot 4. Dot 4 is a uh, high temp synthetic um, brake fluid. Resists. Uh, resist boiling at a higher point than ah. dot three, and it also has um, let's see higher boiling point, and I believe it can absorb a little bit more moisture yes. than the dot three can. Ah, look at my vigies. Oh yeah. Look at this. Ah, look how beautiful. And this is my gingers sus. Very very hardy sus. Ah, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. So, to the, the dot uh, 5.1, it's like a racing fluid. It's a synthetic. 
upgraded, right, Jeff? Yeah. And uh, they're always updating them, all of them, making them uh, higher quality so they handle more heat. They don't boil as quick. And uh, it doesn't uh, leave vapor in your brake fluid lines. So when, it, when, it, when the brake fluid boils, you have steam in there, and you get the smooshy brake pedal. And then uh, basically, that's the end of your brakes. So you don't want that. So you want to use the best brake fluid you can, like a good uh, .3, dot .4 synthetic brake fluid like Amsoil carries. And uh, that's going to be about the best you get. And that's my SPI. Cool. Dennis Atkins, he's back, really enjoying the show even. Good man, Dennis, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start munching. All right, so I'll go let ahead. Jeff talk. All right, so um, where did we leave off? Give me one second. Okay. I believe we left off on the braking fluid. And uh, steering and suspension would be nowhere without the brakes. We discussed a little bit of the braking. Um, so we do need to focus in a little bit on the fluid. So let's get to the fluid. There's a hydraulic portion of all cars with the steering and suspension. Okay, wait, I'm lying to you. Um, steering has sometimes been taken over by electric motors now. We're uh, yep. different, different times, different times. So you have electric motors in the steering racks and electric motors in the steering column. So we're actually more frequently seeing cars that don't have power steering. So we'll get to that second. First and foremost, though, we have our um, we have our brake fluid. Okay, brake fluid does two things. Um, it puts pressure in the system to close your caliper or expand the wheel cylinder and give you braking power. Second thing it does, brake fluid is hygroscopic. Hygro, not hydro. Its job is to absorb moisture and keep it away from the metal parts keep it from the seals, keep it from if you have phenolic components, whatever else, because brake fluid is some brake fl fluid is some pretty nasty stuff. If you get brake fluid on anything other than something that was designed for brake fluid, you're going to watch it disintegrate, get messed up, it gets nasty quick. So, your brake fluid, you need to keep it clean because it will reach a maximum saturation. It starts to discolor, it starts to turn greenish color and black and stuff like that and then you know it's definitely time to change your brake fluid um, that particles get in there it'll get in between the seals it'll make small small cracks it will uh, start coming leaking out of your caliper your wheel cylinders um, sometimes you get you know your brake lines will get a little bit old out here in the west we don't run into that as much I've done a small handful of brake lines in the time that I've worked on cars out here. Um, hard lines, infrequently. Soft lines, I've probably done considerably more of. Um, but if there's something that takes out the, those other components and causes them to leak, causes master cylinder failure, it's dirty fluid. Yep. That's it. And brake fluid. I mean, uh, clutch fluid's important to yeah. change out, too. Clutch fluid, which uh, in every car that I know of, the clutch fluid uses the same fluid, brake fluid. Some of them will share a reservoir. Some of them will not. They'll have their own reservoir off to the side, and then they'll have their master cylinder. But there's a lot of cars I've seen now that just have a little pipe that comes off the bottom of the master cylinder and feeds down to a clutch master, which goes down to the slave. So tell them so. how often they should change that fluid. Uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the official interval is. I include it as part of a 30,000 mile service. Um, and then you can get the basic flush cleans out the top of the braking system. So the master cylinder, uh, basically what we do is we evacuate all the fluid, clean the master cylinder, um, and then put new fluid in there. That's going to save the top end of the system. It's gonna start at the only open point of the braking system is the reservoir. So you have a, re, uh, a barrier that can recapture the moisture. The fluid through the lines is going to eventually dilute into there, but it's basically the same as doing a basic transmission service. You're not getting 100% of the fluid. You're dropping out 30, 40, 50% of the fluid. It's still better than not doing it at all. Now, if you want to do a big brake flush, a big brake flush, uh, I've flushed up to three quarts of fluid through. Most braking systems hold out anywhere between a half a quart to one quart. Um, 
Which so, is just a couple 12 ounce bottles. Yeah, I mean, it's we're, usually we're talking. Two, it's either two or three yeah. 12 ounce bottles of brake fluid. But I will flush three quarts of fluid through there to get all the nasty out. And I bleed, you know, I bleed the same way that you probably bleed too. One person up top, pump it, hold it. Okay, let go. I still do it the old fashioned way. And then there's a way to do it with a hose, I think, right? Yeah, there's, the there's a way. Yep. There's a way to do it with a hose again. Um, there's also a um, there's a machine you can use that puts uh, a pressure on top of the master cylinder. We had it in the army. We used to call it R2 D2. We got we got some new stuff. Thanks oh. again, Dennis. I know Dennis wants to see part two of the super righteous all fluids changed uh, dyno results video and that's coming up this saturday thanks dennis for mentioning that if you haven't seen it check it out you'll see it in my videos playlist uh jared yes it will destroy the rotors fast all right good man jared got jack braun jeff can you talk about engine flush with atf fluid back in the 70s yes i will all right keep going though you got to give me a all minute right. thanks jack really appreciate you being a part of the channel jack Boom, coming down back to Dennis. Can you tell me anything about the heavy duty extended life oil filter? Of course, that's like a, uh, a EAO filter, which is uh, one year, 25,000 miles. Filters at 98.7% efficiency. It's a all synthetic medium. Traps a lot more uh, contaminants. And that way you don't have to change the oil filter as often. And that'll go for a truck filter, full flow. And then when you go to the uh, bypass filters, which I'll put a little link up here in the corner, on the bypass filters, you have uh, a different filter that filters at two microns instead of 20 microns. So it filters 10 times finer. And that filter is uh, usually changed every two years or 70,000 miles. They have a bigger filter that's uh, two years, 90, and then I think they have a 120, which is two years, 120,000 miles. And they filter uh, with a synthetic medium, and uh, they last a long time, and uh, just ups your uh, oil capacity, so you have to change your oil as often. Uh, it's just a great benefit. Appreciate that, Dennis. Uh, coming back down, we got any more here? So answer uh, Jack Bronze okay. about engine flushes in the 70s. Ah, ah, ah. I don't know nothing about it. I love it. So I actually, uh, I personally got schooled by this um, by a friend of mine a long time ago. He called it the, uh, he called it the magic, magic gun flush. And I'm like, dude, what the hell is a magic gun flush? He's like, well... He schooled me about ATF. ATF is 0W20 weight oil or 5W20 weight oil, depending on what you're doing. It's a very, very low viscosity. Um, the other stuff's even lower now. But basically, you put that in there with the high levels of detergent, it does the same thing. Now, it doesn't have the resistance to uh, uh, fuel and combustion material, stuff like that, but you drain a quart out, you put a quart of ATF in, you run it for about 15 minutes, and then you drain it. I've even seen guys go as far as to drain all the oil, put five quarts or whatever it takes to the ATF, and run it like that. And you know what? Sure as shit. Um, it works. I've seen it work. Now, it's an off-label usage, okay? It's just like, well, Guchin helps you quit cigarettes. It's an off-label usage. Um, I'm definitely not going to tell you to do it either. I have found that there's other flushes out there that are specifically, specific. hand me some candy here, mm -hmm. specifically designed to do that job. It's specifically designed to work with the oil. Honestly, transmission fluid engine oil, hell yeah, it works. Um, but also the 70s and the, even the early 80s vehicles, the machine tolerances for the rings, the machine tolerances for the bearings were a lot, lot bigger. Now we've got tolerances so tight we're requiring viscosity of oil that's 0W20. That's a very thin passageway. That's why you have to use that thin oil. Back in a day, what, straight 40 weight, 1040, 2050, straight 30, 
those are the weights of oil. You needed that thick stuff. Your engine started making noise, put some thicker oil in, and you know what? You could get away with that. You, you really, you had very durable components, but they were also not assembled as tight as possible. And everybody loves to hug and hold on to their 60s and 70s and 80s vehicles. Look, I'm in the field. I see it every day. Everybody's like, oh, this one was better, this one was better. You got eight miles to the gallon, nine miles, ten miles to the gallon. Yeah, gas was cheap as hell. Now you're driving a car that has 25 to 45 miles a gallon. We have to put things together a little bit tighter to accomplish that. We have to run the engines at a much, much higher operating te temperature. Back in the day, you wouldn't even have to worry if you pulled your thermostat out and rode around without it. It didn't matter. Now, you pull your thermostat out, your vehicle's going to set the check engine light because it's not seeing the vehicle warm up. So, it's kind of a give and take. Yep, dad's old Buick, go forever. You could just, you could dump whatever you wanted, it would run fine. You could flush it with transmission fluid, but what you couldn't do is get better than 12 miles a gallon. Hey Jeff. Yeah? Let's go outside and show them how hot it is. You want to go on an adventure? We want to show you how hot the blacktop is outside. Here you All go, right. Jeff. Let's do this. Let's throw that in your pocket. Okay, guys. Ah. Hang on. All right. We're going outside sir. here, and uh, Jeff's getting all wired up. Uh. All right. There we go. So Jeff's okay. going to show Unwired the temperature. Wired. So right now it's, uh, I don't know, almost 7 o'clock. We're going to quick show okay. the temperature of the blacktop. Here it's about go, 109 guys. degrees out here in Henderson. We're out here to shoot the temperature of the blacktop. And uh, we have ourselves a little laser beam gun. Okay. Let's do it. So let's do this. We're going to shoot the asphalt. Uh, this it, is yeah. what? 7 o'clock-ish? Yeah, Something yeah. Something like let's that? Let's do it. All right. Asphalt, 125.4.6. Um, let's see if the do some chain tar. Can, yeah, let's do some tar. Uh, 126. All right, so it's already coming down pretty it's good. Hot. It it's, gets it's up to about 150, is yeah. what it gets up to 160. And uh, so that basically bakes your right, uh, your uh, oil pan, bakes your trans. So it's so important to change that fluid. So we just wanted to show you kind of what it's like out here. Man, it's like a shock coming back inside because. Uh, it's just so hot out when you do that 50, really 60 degree uh, right. temperature difference sometimes. It's crazy. It was uh, 115 degrees down there at Jeff's shop the other day. Oh, Nuts. it was insane, right? That was a lot of fun, Jeff. As we shot, the, the ground was like 160. Yeah. No one got killed. It was amazing. We made it. No one got hurt. Ah, beautiful. Okay. Back in focus. And I'm the first one to call dibs again on food. Good man, Jeff. Do to do. Good man. We're just gonna do the the chopstick long reach over here. Yeah, I yeah. Got some, uh, I got some stickers on the other side of the world, so I'm gonna do the long range ah. chop. And uh, just to prove I have the ability to use chopsticks. Beautiful hands, Jeff. One year in Korea, and you you better learn yep. how to use chopsticks. Yes. Oh, I couldn't do it left hand. I don't know if I could pull. Ah. Oh, look at you. You're an animal. Ah. I'm taking a bite first. The chopstick tutorial. Mm, mm. Okay, I'm being told I'm shooting the wrong way. Go ahead, Jeff. Sadie just caught me. Thank you, Sadie. We did that for fun. That was on purpose. Yes. Jeff is practicing the art of videography. That's right. The art of a video deception. Yes. Sadie, thank you. All right. So uh, left-handed. Left-handed, huh? I feel like you're challenging. It's a stickler, Jeff. Uh, it's a stickler. Okay, well. Makes you think about it. It does. I'm a little bit more awkward. Mm. But the principle is the same. Mm. Mm. Oh, boy. Struggling a lot more than I thought I would. Okay. Oh, nope. Ain't don't happening. Let, don't let it get in your head, Jeff. Yeah, ain't happening. Not not today. It's like there putting the lube in the right place. Sometimes it just takes two finger, 
you just go ahead and whoop, wet her up. And that's it. Sometimes so, it just uh, takes one finger when you're putting in the PI cleaner. Just one finger. You take it, stick it in, and you hold it with just one finger. <laughs> Ooh, PI story the other day. All right, tell yeah. us, Jeff. Tell us. I hadn't put a bottle of PI in my uh, in my Honda for a little bit. All right. And it just it had started feeling a little bit laggy. Now it's summertime. The turbo. You know that I have a turbo button on my Honda. I have a turbo button. Uh huh. Abbreviated in a different language, it says A C. Had no idea. If I hit that A C button, the green light goes off snaps my neck back and I go an extra mile an hour faster yeah are you serious yeah, yeah. yeah for real one mile an hour it's more than that if I turn my AC off my car oh, can't horsepower right. it's right. sad as hell oh yeah but that being said the summertime I'm used to my car being a little bit doggy um, and I put the bottle of PI and on my way home I got about halfway home and I started feeling a little bit a little bit more pep again so I'm kind of excited. We're going to probably do the Honda first on the uh, Signature Series flush and uh, transmission flush. I think we'll just do all the fluids at once. We'll do power steering, yeah. transmission, coolant. You're an animal. You're an animal, even. I didn't even know something like that was possible. Yes. Oh, oh we're dropping our chopsticks. So look at you all over the place. All there over the go. place. All right. So let's see here. Oh, my gosh. We are Missy. I'm Miguel AOG. Hey, Miguel. Um, really appreciate you being a part of the channel, man. Thanks. My heart breaks for you because you have to work in humidity. I, I will take the scorching desert heat. I'll lay on 126 degree ground. I don't want to be in humidity. Now, uh, where, if you're still on there, uh, where are you hailing from? Yeah, I can't stand working in the in the uh, high humidity, Jeff. You always got your shirt sticking to your arms. Yeah. You're pulling your arms up, then you're pulling your shirt up, and I mean it's just one thing after another. It helps to have like a breathable material, but man, I used to do it. Oh, hey, awesome. We'll uh, we'll send you a link. Yes, yes, Miguel, we'll send yeah. you a Amsoil link. I'll uh, text it to you as soon as I get off the live stream here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, easy peasy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah. Uh, if I may ask, I was in New York for uh, a little bit. I was in New York for a little bit. All right. And um, basically, it was humid as hell. I was in upstate New York. I was as far upstate as you can get. I was in Watertown, which is just uh, just north of Syracuse, about an hour and a half. Um, and in the summertime, it was gorgeous, but my gosh, when you hit 90, 95 degrees, you were sweltering, sweltering, you thought you wanted to die. So, uh, yeah, no, keep the humidity. Um, Jeff. Yeah. That's pretty good. Is it? It's got... I got to get the recipe. There's it. Oh. Well, here's what it is, okay? It's actually dihydrogen monoxide and a squeeze of lime so in chemistry class dihydrogen monoxide with a squeeze of lime has actually been shown to have a hundred percent mortality rate yeah everybody I've ever seen that drank that stuff has eventually died oh my god not even lying to you that's terrible that's a real statistic that's terrible, Jeff. One of the guys, it took it a hundred years to kill him. Cheese and rice. That's a slow death. That's like as quick and dirty as it gets, Jeff. Right? Thanks for sharing that with yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Ooh. what are you saucing up over there? This is a vegan buffalo wing. I don't think there's buffaloes. I don't think there's wings, but it looks so wonderful. I haven't had chicken wings in a very long time. And these are fantastic. So I guess the, the centerpiece, the bone, Get is, up there and show them, Jeff. Yeah, Get in their here. face. Let's, let's take a peek at this. So there's the buffalo sauce right there on the back, buffalo sauce. There's the skin. It has wonderful, wonderful skin texture. 
there's a little tiny piece of bamboo stick right there. Or not bamboo, I'm sorry. Um, sugar cane. And then it really does actually look like I'm eating meat. <laughs> I, it's, like, I don't even know. I don't know. It's wonderful. That is hilarious, Jeff. I gotta say, it's wonderful. I tell you what, I've tried that stuff. It always tastes good. Yeah, it's no, it's fantastic. Very interesting. Mm. It's cute. Cheers. Awesome. So, yeah, so uh, let's see. Oh! Uh oh, what do we got? Awesome. We got also any advice in coming in the deer? I think it might be worse on Long Island where I'm from. I'm looking to leave the job by the end of the year because I'm giving me migraines. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that stuff will drive you nutty. Uh, I can't. That's I, why I moved out here. I was actually from Philly area and I just couldn't do it anymore. I didn't have the heart to make the winners. I was thinking about. You know, doing things I shouldn't do and like, at that point. Like not working in the automotive industry? No. You weren't contemplating that, no, were you? No, no way. Okay. No, 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 no way. No way, no way. No. I just caught, I caught a cold sweat there. <laughs> that boggled me. Boggled I know. me. I think it might be worse Long Island, but Bob. Ah. Well, yeah, you're uh, surrounded by water. 100 degrees. Uh, 40% humidity in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh! Thanks, my courageous, awesome oh patient bro from Texas, the big Lone Star State. Thanks I, for checking out the channel. I need to send Mr. L we'll go Mr. L oh, what's the name? What's the he Kings Kingston. What's what's he go by? The K. Stets. Okay. Kingston. Uh, All right. Well. I don't know. Okay. Oh wait. Dexton. Cool. Texas. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to say, Mr. Texas, I need to send you a cold bottle of water. I really, really, really... That's hotter feel... than here, Jeff. Yeah. Humidity. That's worse. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sorry. That's We're... rough. Not worthy here. That's I, there's worthy. no way. I. Then we I'll got here, mine. we got uh, Miguel. I remember when my chem, chem teacher said the same joke about uh, that hydrogen monoxide. All right, yeah, yeah that's a good <laughs> one, yeah. That's good stuff. I like throwing that joke. I've seen it around a few times. It's hilarious because with the right crowd, with the right group of people, you can get them to bandwagon and be like, this is the next keto diet. If you stay away from dihydrogen monoxide, you'll live. It's hilarious. But thank you for getting the joke. <laughs> yeah, and uh, special thanks to Zach again. Zach did our first super chat on the channel last week. Oh, yeah. And uh, he said it's real easy to do. Super chat, what it is, it's, it gives you the ability to tip and also give donations to all the creators here on YouTube. So if you ever want to uh, give a tip to someone, all you do is you click on this little money sign. You'll see it on the super chat area. And then you, uh, you hit it, super chat. Put your credit card in you can tip five ten twenty bucks whatever. yeah and uh, that money if you tip us we're going to put it back into the giveaway directly so we actually do a giveaway at the end of the month and uh, we've been doing like a hundred dollar gift card to jeff's shop and people get car parts or lube or whatever they want and then the other thing jeff does is uh, we also give a tool away yeah so the last thing we did was he did a three-eighth drive swivel snap on uh chrome piece and uh, we had three winners last month. This month, uh, we're going to do what else, Jeff? What are we going to do in the giveaway? Uh, this week, I'm going to get you, you know, because we're talking about heat. Yeah. It's summer. It's August. And there is no shortage of hot days left. Um, we're going to get you a Yeti thermos. Now, let me tell you about a Yeti thermos. I'm your spokesman here. So, you ready? A Yeti thermos you can fill with ice. You can put water in it, and it will stay cold and icy for 24 hours at least. <laughs> if you open it a few times and consume, it'll still be fine, because at the end of that 24 hours, it'll still be cold. Unbelievable I technology. I love that technology. They basically use, they use a, uh, a vacuum canister, because ah. heat can't transfer through a vacuum, guys. Duh. Oh. I didn't yeah. know that, Jeff. It actually can't. He can't oh. travel through a bag. There's nothing to conduct it. So what they do is they take an inner cylinder and an outer cylinder and suspend them. So the one is suspended together, and the place they meet at the top is so thin that the heat exchange of the metal alone is minimal. Wow. They use the lid to insulate that as well. So you have this 
suspended liquid inside the cylinder inside of your jug that is not transferring heat but for a small little ring on top. Huh. Awesome technology. Awesome. It's and killer. it's not even new. It's not even new. It's killer. It's good though. Yeah, hell yeah. What do we so got? What else? We're at we're coming up on an hour, Jeff. This is a lot we of fun are. day. Oh, it's a blast. Great times, great times. Yeah, we're we're fortunate we're not in the garage. The garage right now in Henderson's what, like 107, 108? I, I believe last I checked it was a hundred in hell. Yeah, it was a hundred in hell. I looked, it said it. Oh wait, that's that's an eleven. Yeah, one, one, one. Ah, oh, I all, right. all right. All right. Ah, my right. bad. Same thing, Jeff, I think. <laughs> right? Same thing. You can see Jeff's in one piece today. Sometimes he gets a little distraught. I didn't even know my own name the other day. It was so hot. Yeah. 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 So I'm going through the desert on a horse with no name. Yep. yep. Felt good to be out of the rain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. in the desert, you don't remember your name. I know. Because there ain't no one for it to give you no shame. Oh, my god. That's as much of the song as I'm going to sing. We got 12 viewers right now. Thanks Hell for, yeah. Thanks for checking out the channel. Really appreciate it. We got 12. If we got five on here. If you're enjoying this stuff, definitely give it a thumbs up. Yes, please. It takes a lot of effort to work with lube. Um, it does. I pride myself on it, and it becomes natural. And uh, yeah. I like to consider tall pours one of my favorite after after, after, uh, after hours after uh, endeavors. Hours. Yes. Look at you. <laughs> I think we can make a bartender out of you. Yeah, I yeah, think I can do a, it. a mixologist, yes. as they say. Yes. Fantastic. Yep, yep. So what else, Jeff? Uh, what else for the giveaway? Any tools oh. we should do? We're going to give a hundred dollar gift card away, and how you how you uh, get entered in? What you do is you can it's friend easy. me on Facebook, tag, uh, share the channel. You can go on the Express Loop page. This is Jeff's page on Facebook. You can share that. And then what you can do when you share the channel, you can text me. My cell phone number is 702-472-3614. And uh, just text me a screenshot that you're sharing the channel. And that means you're a real part of the community. And when you're a big part of the community, we have to give back to you. Absolutely. And it's just such an important thing. And it's amazing the reciprocation and kind of what ties together a community these days. Yeah. And as much as people are getting independent, we're still all united. We still help each other. You have to. And uh, if it means pulling out your deck and doing a card trick and entertaining somebody, yeah. it's just something you have to do. Put putting a smile, putting a smile. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you want to get a hold of me, same thing. Yes. Shoot me a text. We got a 702. 907 yes. 9227 or if you want to talk to a live person please call the shop at 702 433 5823 so that's if you can't get a hold of us one of those ways the apocalypse has happened I would check the satellite for a large hole in the earth where Vegas is because you're going to find one of us. Yep. Pretty definitely. sure. Pretty sure. And if you've just been kind of nosing around with the channel, you're kind of curious about stuff. That's a good thing. Because we got a lot of stuff to feed your appetite. Absolutely. I want you to go to the home page on the channel. Go ahead and click on uh, videos. You can scroll down through a lot of the videos. If you go to the right a little bit more, you'll see playlists. Check out some playlists. We got oil analysis videos where we do follow-up videos on this oil after 20,000 miles. We did that on my Uber lift car. Yeah. We did transmission fluid changes, radiator coolant, brake fluid, power steering fluid, uh, differentials. We got European vehicles. Ooh. We got a Ferrari on the channel. Europe. You say, uh, yeah, I get a lot of people that are afraid of uh, engine flushes. Well, I've flushed a Ferrari. I've flushed some high-end cars. Wow. So, yeah, we've already done all this stuff. And uh, we're actually getting on to some big monster stuff coming up next. Ooh. We got a huge 18 wheeler we're going to be doing. Nice. And we're doing an engine flush on it. Oh, fantastic. And it's going to take six of those bottles. Give me that bottle, Jeff. Holy shit. Yeah. How many quarts? Six bottles. It's going to take 40 quarts. 40 quarts? 40 to 44. Uh, that 10 is or 11 gallons of oil. 10 or 11 gallons. My God. And we're going to see this oil just. Uh, it's going to splooge out like a waterfall. Yeah, I got to ask you, what kind of mileage are they doing on that? They got to go at least 100,000 miles on that oil, right? That's a great question, Jeff. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of OEM intervals is 15,000 miles on a truck. Okay. So they can comfortably double that with the Signature Series oil. Yeah. And uh, if they do oil analysis, where they take a little teeny weeny, almost like a urine sample, but it's oil. Yeah. 
they do a sample, they test it, they test the oxidation, the viscosity change, uh, metal, sit in it, metal, yeah, wear metal. They look for wear metal. And then at that point, they say, you know what, you're still good. Yep. And uh, some of these guys are going 50, 100,000 miles. Yeah. But most of them that do that, they're running a double bypass oil filter. And I'll actually oh, put yeah. a little link to that up here in the corner. And that is very important for uh, keeping your, your uh, oil well filtered, especially yeah. in diesel. They get sooty, they, oh, they get, get a lot, lot of black, of black particles. I'd be so. curious to see the size of the bypass filters. I mean, if you're oh, yeah. you're filtering forty gal or uh, ten gallons of oil, yeah, they're it's, a, it's about it's about two, I think two bottles high. Okay, uh, almost that big. And you got two or three of them. Um, some are single and some are double bypass. Okay, and they're good for uh, two year, one hundred twenty thousand miles. Some of them. Fudge. Yeah, that's awesome. That so is you fantastic. still you still change your full flow filter though. Okay. You still pop it off and change it. That works. Yeah. I like it. Wow, we got 15 people watching us, Jeff. Okay. We're famous. M3. We're All right, we got more stuff going on. Needs. Best in the yellow. Does that say 1060? Top 040. Ah, Dennis, I like the oil the best with the yellow top 040. Yeah, this, so this is what goes in the Hellcat, the Gen 5 Viper, the V10. This is the new OEM factory fill on the C5 Corvette. And it's also on the seven, the C7. I'm sorry, the C7 Stingray. I'm wow. I'm saying C5 like it's my car. Uh, and then the C8 Corvette, the new mid-engine Corvette, is also going to take that. And they kept the same engine, so it's the same basic uh, v, uh, V8 that's in the Stingray. That's They're going to have in the new mid-engine uh, uh, Corvette, which is the C8. Yeah. And that's coming out here, I think, this month or next month. Yeah. Been taking orders on it right this second. I can't wait. But that's I can't what comes wait. in it right here. It's That's good beautiful. to uh, negative 40 degrees below zero, and then it's good for intermittent track days. So you're covered in all angles. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, what I else, think, Jeff? I don't know that we got a whole lot else. I'm going to go on the Snap-on truck tomorrow and uh, see if something strikes my fancy for the giveaway. If I find something next week, cool. If not, I'll wait until the week after. But uh, no, it's going to be something cool. It's going to be something gadgety. It's going to be something fun. All right hopefully useful but it there's a possibility it might be absolutely friggin useless all right and that's okay i like it that's okay i like it so all right well uh i guess thank everybody for coming and joining us tonight this was fantastic we got to eat at another restaurant i kind of i dig the spot we got a comfortable spot to sit we got good lighting uh the staff here was wonderful so and the food was really good too i think i'm gonna eat some more yeah i'm definitely gonna be back here and we're right here on what are we on stephanie and uh yeah. what stephanie and uh, warm springs stephanie and warm springs yep. and we're, it's uh, called Ve uh, vegan express oh, veggie express veggie, veggie express veg eat express yeah, show them that show them there the, we uh, go show them the big boom bowl. boom give it to them veggie give it to them jeff express. give them the veggies put this it up there the in their face get ah, it up there get it up there higher ah, higher jeff higher beautiful. all up in it all up in it there it is beautiful beautiful ah. all right so that pretty much sums Boom. it up and uh oh what about the small engine oil jason cook thanks jason for being a part of the channel we'll talk about that next time uh but the small engine oil it's 100 percent synthetic just like this just like the european motor oil and it uh lasts double the oem interval on your tractors and your push mowers and stuff and uh we got our other amg mice mister we got even what the Enzo product you can use in a BMW M3 needs 1060. You can run like a, a bunch of different oils. I would call him soil technical support. Yeah. I'll put that in the link below, but uh, most likely they're going to recommend like a 1550. And then AMS oil also makes a straight 60 weight and you can use both of those. I'm sure. But uh, go ahead and give them a call, see what they, uh, what they're thinking. If you're not doing track, you could probably even use a, a 540 like this, this European. And uh, this is going to really hold up well, but it's not going to be good for the high heat where the oil thins out. Yeah. So you probably wouldn't want to track it with 540. Well, and I'm not sure, but I'm guessing the M3 might have turbos on there. Yep. So if you're running turbos, you do want... 100% synthetic. Yeah, and you want a little bit... I would go a little bit heavier oil, something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, so you don't lose oil pressure. Yeah. Yep. So that pretty much sums it up. It does. But in a nutshell. All right. In a nutshell. All right. That's what we call uh, Steven's brain. It's in a nutshell. Yes, yes. I have a lot on my mind, but it's a vacant lot. 
Yes. It's okay. You yes. know what? Free parking, though. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Awesome. So that's pretty much right. it. So, cool. uh, what do you say, Jeff? Wrap it up. Wrap it up. So, uh, cheers yeah. to protection. Cheers. Protection, protection, protection. We'll see you next week. See Thanks, you next guys. Week. Thank you. See ya. Done and done.